really like to um, thank you for the invitation to present at the SVP conference. My colleague and friend Wendy Patton and I were delighted to receive this invitation and unfortunately Wendy was unable to be here so I'm presenting for both of us. So I'd also like to thank the conference organisers because um, putting on a conference like this is no mean feat and it takes a very long time and very many hours of work so we're, I'm really appreciative of the time and effort that the organisers have put into putting such a great conference together. In the time that I have with you today, I'll make a few brief comments about systems theory framework of career development. I'll overview the framework because there may be some of you who aren't familiar with it, but in overviewing it I'm also able to show how it integrates or actually connects with practice. And um, so I'll talk about the um, practical applications of the STF and in relation to qualitative career assessment and to career counselling and make a few points at the end about integration of theory, research and practice from my perspective with my work with the systems theory framework of career development. To begin with, I need to make a couple of points about the systems theory framework. It comes out of general systems theory and it's based on that, so it doesn't have a base in our field necessarily. It is it is formulated on the basis of a theory from another field. And um, when it first began, I was training as a family therapist, and so obviously systems theory was part of my training, and I looked at how it applied in the career development field. So systems theory is about um, looking at rather than looking at parts in isolation, looking at holes and looking at how all of the parts interrelate and connect. And in our field, the first person that I can, we've found who spoke about systems theory and its potential in our field was actually Ozipo in 1983, who said that the systems approach um, was in a position to take, to take the most useful concepts and apply them to career behaviour. So we in effect took the systems theory and applied it. We first published it in 1995 and a point I need to make right from the start is that this is a meta-theoretical framework. It's not a theory so it doesn't do a lot of the things that theories do that was um, in, from our first presentation. It's a meta-theory. Um, so it's a holistic way of viewing things. We published it as a textbook and we're now up to our third edition in 2014. So as a meta-theory it recognises the contributions of all theories. It's not competing with theories, it it's, um, says that Holland has a place, Super has a place, SCT has a place. All theories have a place and they account for various parts of the, the, the theoretical framework. And the STF assumes an individual and context perspective, so it's very holistic and I think that's very important. So in taking an individual and context perspective, we start with the individual and you'll recognise here a lot of the, the um, traits that have been well studied in our field. And this is the individual system, but what we know about individuals is that they don't live in isolation, that they live in the context of other people systems or social systems. So they live in the context of families, they go to schools, they have workplaces, etc. We know that those social systems don't exist in isolation either, that they live in the con that, that they exist in the context of a broader community, a broader environmental societal system. And so we know there that even though some of these influences can be a little more remote from people, they do have profound impact. So political decisions can open up, close down opportunities, <coughs> geographical location, etc., all change the opportunities that are available to people. What we know and the dotted lines represent here is what we call the recursiveness between influences. Those influences are not static, they're dynamic, they're changing all of the time, they're interacting. And so the systems theory framework is a very dynamic view of career development. 
What we also know is that, so recursiveness is one of the process constructs of the system theory framework. The other process constructs are change over time and the importance of time. And the, we need to take account of time because who I am today is a result of who I was yesterday and who I'll be tomorrow is a result of who I was yesterday and who I am today. So stories, as Mary Sue said, are connected in time and we can't construct the story of the future if we don't acknowledge and understand the stories of the present and the stories of the past. We also take account of chance, the unpredictable but can make profound influences on, on a person's um, career, either opening up or closing down opportunities. So that in a nutshell is the framework and in terms of connecting theory, research and practice, we also, Wendy and I, suggest that the STF is a theory of career counselling because it provides a conceptual and a practical map for career counsellors and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. But that's a really key thing because it's such a visual way of representing career counselling or career education in schools or a number of other applications. When we were first talking about applying this to practice, we put learning as a very central construct in the application of the systems theory framework to practice. And we particularly draw on the experiential learning theory of Kolb. And learning underpins career counselling, career education, training and supervision. And we position ourselves as learners and our clients as learners. So it's readily applied. In terms of a map, a practical map, and this is where you might go blind, but I hope not. <laughs> um, essentially, when we come together in career counselling, I, as an individual, my system of influences comes together with the system of influences of the person with whom I'm working, the client system of influences. That becomes the therapeutic system of influences. And the content influences there, like peers, workplaces, education, family, all become the sorts of things that we can talk about in counselling. So it's much broader than a focus on work and becomes much more of a therapeutic um, intervention than a straight, let's talk about work and the next decision you're going to make. Let's contextualise that decision. But all of that happens in the context of an organisation, which might determine who our clients are, how long we have to spend with them, or the type of work that we do with them. And it happens in the context of, of the, the broader environmental societal system and in the context of time. So if we think about then that as a map that we can use, our main work in applying um, the, the system theory framework has been in qualitative career assessment and also in career counselling. I'll spend a little bit of time on qualitative career assessment first, but we've applied it in a, in a uh, process called My System of Career Influences that some of you might be interested in. We have an adolescent and an adult version of that. But my colleague Peter McElveen's also applied it in the Career Systems Interview and My Career Chapter. I'll focus on My System of Career Influences. In connecting theory and practice, we move from the content influences <coughs> of the systems theory framework and say, well, how does that apply in practice? If we've got an individual system, basically in practice, we're trying to get the individual to think about themselves. If we think about the social system, we're trying to get the individual to think about the people around them. If we think about the environmental societal system, that broad construct, we're trying to get individuals to think about that. So basically, in translating theory to practice, we get individuals to think about each of those different levels and pull it together towards the end of the, my system of career influences. We do that by presenting it step by step in a little booklet. As you can see here, a page of the booklet, and we provide instructions on how to do that. So the the clients can select influences that apply, they can add ones that don't apply, they can make notes, they can scribble all over it and decide which are the most important influences. And they work through that for the individual, the social system, the environmental societal system and time. And eventually they put all of those parts together in their own system of influences. 
And this is an example of one that Kate in grade 11 drew. And it was a beautiful thing with yellow and pink and all sorts of colours. One of the things about my system of career influences, though, that's important to remember is that it's not an art competition. These are highly personalised drawings that are meaningful to the person and we have to unpack that drawing from the perspective of the person. So, and they provide the detail and the reality of the maps as they tell their stories. So we've used that with a number of, of different groups now. We've used it with disadvantaged South African our students, middle-class South African Australian students. We've used it in South Africa with parents and young people trying to understand how they differ in what they think might influence the, the, the decisions of young people. Chinese college students in Hong Kong and Swiss adolescents have also used it. So it's got applicability across countries and across cultures. And we've also used it with professionals and blue-collar workers. When we use our, um, when we do our interventions with counselling or, or career assessment, basically we have to enter the life space of the client. And if you remember the diagram from before, we have to enter their life space. We have to start where they are. We have to help them to tell their stories. From their stories, we decide whether career assessment is used or not used and which kind of assessment might be most useful for them. Career assessment is not our starting point. We enter their life space and hear their stories first. Based on that, the story may continue and they may be able to take action and move on, or we may do some career assessment. <clears throat> In applying the system theory framework to career counselling, we work on the metaphor working with storytellers. And basically, our storytelling approach to career counselling that we're working on is a narrative career counselling approach. It draws on narrative theory, and Mary Sue spoke about narrative theory. The practice constructs of the, the um, of assessment and also career counselling are reflection, connectedness, meaning making, learning and agency, which you'll recognise in common with other um, approaches, to, narrative approaches to counselling that are out there. Where we differ is that connectedness is very much um, a construct of systems theory and very much applies in our practice. So we emphasise that, we emphasise reflection and we particularly emphasise learning, which is not so much emphasised in other approaches to narrative career counselling. So we draw on the constructs of systems theory in our application to practice. So in an interaction, whether it's a, a qualitative career assessment or um, a career counselling interaction, we engage in a reflective process. We encourage the person to tell their stories um, related to the system of influences within, they, which in, within which they live, which is connectedness. We identify how the influences have impacted on their story, which is meaning making. They identify the themes and patterns, which is learning, and then they can play a more active role in constructing their futures, which is the um, active agency that Mary Sue also mentioned. So basically, in applying um, the STF to career counselling, it's really practical, it's very user-friendly, and it's a flexible way of treating clients uniquely. It accommodates cultural diversity. It's applied, we've applied to a range of settings and cultural groups. Um, it incorporates the personal culture of counsellors. So the, F, the, the individual system allow, allows people to reflect on their own culture and where they've come from, which is critical as career counsellors. We need to know where we've come from and it promi provides a mechanism for doing that. And it enables us to intervene at multiple levels. We can intervene at the individual, the family, or the school level. Last two slides. In actual fact, all the way through for the 20 year history of the STF, we've been integrating or connecting. And for us as a systems theory framework, it's more about connectedness, connecting theory, practice, and research. So it emanated from practice and my desire to apply systems thinking to practice. We developed the research model in 19... We, we developed the, the framework in 1995. 
We actually took it to practitioners, and interesting that you were mentioning taking it to practitioners. We actually took the framework to practitioners in 1997 and said, how could you apply this? How would it work in your setting? And about 15 different practitioners from a range of settings and um, told us, and we published that in a book. So subsequently, you can see that we've, we've integrated or connected theory, research and practice as we've progressed in developing our career assessment and our career counselling model. Up until um, <coughs> and including our third edition of the book where we, you know, um, revised the theory. So in actual fact, all I can say about um, integrating theory and practice, if we use that word, although I guess from a systems theory framework I prefer connectedness, there was a connection from the beginning between <coughs> practice and theory. It emanated out of practice. It's because of um, career learning and because it's, it's um, a visual thing, it applies to all sorts of learners, visual learners, kinesthetic learners. It, <coughs> we do applied research. So we, we do our research in different settings like schools and university counselling service. We continue to link research and theory. We continue to link theory, research and practice. There's a very close relationship with what we do in practice and with our theory. And as theorists and researchers, both Wendy and I remain close to our practitioner base and to our practitioner colleagues. So in a nutshell, that's the systems theory framework and my take on how we can facilitate connectedness or integration between theory, research and practice. Thank you.